promised I was going to, I said I would do a sugar problem for you. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, um, I'll do mannose. It, it, well, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to change. Well, I'll do mannose. Okay, so again, let me, let me change it around a little bit. So I'm giving you a different configuration here of OHs. Um, I think this is different from everything we've done in class. As you know, the names and the um, structures of the sugars are given on the sheet that you have. This is a D sugar, and the way you know it's a D sugar is by looking at the configurational carbon, which is this carbon. Okay. What we want to do is convert the sugar into what is called the Hayworth form. Okay, and the Hayworth form is the cyclic form, and there's a methodology for doing this, and it's, it's a pretty standard methodology for doing it. Okay, so the Hayworth form is just the cyclic form. Okay, we did this on Friday. So I'm taking this sugar, this D sugar, and what I would do is I would take this oxygen and attack this carbon right here and this pi bond would open. And ultimately, this will become an OH, and this will just become a CO bond, but you're, you draw it in this very elastic way. So our next step would be like this. This is gonna become an asymmetric carbon. Okay, one of the forms that you would get is this, and I'm drawing the giant elastic bond Okay, so notice this center, this oxygen is this oxygen. This center is the same, this one's the same, this one's the same, this one's the same. Now, the enantiomer of this sugar is the complete mirror image of that sugar, but the one place you have flexibility is that this carbon, which is the same as this carbon here, this was an aldehyde, this is an aldohexose. At, when this attacks a carbonyl, it can attack from either side, even though it's drawn on one side here. So this OH can end up on the right or the left, and this carbon is called the anomeric carbon, and you can identify an anomeric carbon because it's attached to two oxygens, this oxygen and this oxygen, but we'll see it when we tip it over. This particular form, and this is the configurational carbon, okay, this, this, um, this is the alpha anomer, and the alpha anomer is the, com is the um, anomer that has this OH and this oxygen on the same side. Now, this is going to translate into something else when I tip it over. The beta anomer would have this at the anomeric carbon, this OH would be on this side and the H would be on that side. That would be the beta anomer. But I'm going to go back to the alpha because that's what I have written up here. So what I'm going to do is first rotate this Fisher projection around so that the O is on the, horizontal, the uh, vertical and the CH2OH is on the horizontal. So let me draw what that looks like. Can you kind of see it, Clem? Mm. Okay. So, all right. Oh, I got to rotate. So this this O is going to come down here. This goes here. This goes here, and now we still have that big long elastic bond. Now the next step is to tip the sugar over on its side. Again, how do you know it's a sugar? Well, when I started, it was a polyhydroxy carbonyl compound, and that's what sugars are. So I'm flipping this over, 
and on its side, and it, now it's going to look like this. Now everything that's on the right ends up on the bottom, and everything on the left ends up on the top. Let me draw it a little smaller. Can you, is that too small? That's probably too small. Let me make it a little bigger. So this anomeric, this is the anomeric. The anomeric, the OH is going down. The next OH is going up. The next OH is going down. The next one down. And then finally, at this one, the O is now in the, you can put it on either side. It doesn't matter. I guess I'll put it here. We got our big elastic bond, and the CH2, wrong place, sorry. So H, 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 and then CH2, OH up here. This is the new thing is that my dog barks while I'm doing this. Okay, so I just tip that over. Let me make sure I have enough carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I have all the carbons and I have the stereochemistry set. And then what you need to do is pucker this in to a normal ring, because that is like a ridiculous ring with an incredibly long bond in it. And there's no carbon here. A lot of people ask me in class if there was a carbon over here. This is the first carbon, and this right here is the last carbon. This O is part of the ring. Okay, so what would it look like next? We're almost done. Okay, what we would look at what we would get next would be, and you have to draw it this way, if it's a D sugar, you have to draw the oxygen in the upper right hand corner. So this, this right here is the anomeric. So I'd put the OH down, it's still on the right, the H up, the OH up, the H down, this is not the most beautiful drawing. Um, then I have two that are down. OH, and you often in biochemistry textbooks see sugars drawn like this. Okay, and then this would be the CH2OH. And if you took this particular sugar and put it in a, in a chair, it might look like this. You would draw a chair. It would not necessarily be the chair. Um, this OH would be in the down equatorial position. I'm going to leave the H's out. This OH is in the up equatorial position. This one's in the down, oh, down equatorial position. This one would be in the down axial position. And this would be in the up axial position. And this chair would be in equilibrium with um, the other chair. And in this case, you know, this one's probably a little bit more stable, probably. Probably not immensely more stable than the other chair, which would look like this. Right, this would pucker the O up. The OH would be down. This one would be up. Look at all these axial groups. Down, and then this one's equatorial. And then this would be equatorial. Now this CH2OH group is really the biggest group, and it probably has the biggest impact on the, impact on the conformer. So um, what we said in class is that these, these are just conformers that are in equilibrium with each other, but the alpha anomer is in equilibrium with the beta anomer overall. Okay, so just a few little little pointers. So this is alpha. You can tell from looking at this right away that this is an alpha because the anomer carbon, which is the one hooked to two oxygens in the ring, um, the OH is down with the oxygen in the back right hand corner. It's a D sugar and this is down. D sugars always have this group up, the C2H, CH2OH group. So same deal here, the OH is down, the OH is down. And when I showed you the tilted structure, or the one that looked like a Fisher projection, the OH and this O were in the, on the same side in the first drawing. Okay, so generally speaking, let's keep a, an eye on the sugar down here. Okay. This form, this alpha anomer, is in equilibrium in terms, in a chemical sense, okay, with this anomer, okay, and I'm just drawing chairs because they sit, they no doubt sit in the chair form. So I'm switching that OH from the down position to the up position, okay, and these are anomers. And in this anomer, we're going to have three groups equatorial. So that's, what, that's the reason I picked it to draw, okay. 
This is the beta anomer, and this is the alpha anomer. And they're in equilibrium with each other when they're in water. They're not a 50-50 mixture. As you can tell, they're diastereomers. Why are they diastereomers? The only place the stereochemistry changes is that carbon. These are not conformers. These are chemically different. This is a diastereomer of that. It's not superimposable, even if you flip the chair. But how do they interconvert? They interconvert by the ring closing, opening again, forming the straight chain compound, and then reclosing on the other side. Okay, if you want to draw an L sugar, all you have to do is draw the mirror image of the compound. Okay? What time do I have? Uh, you're at 2.50 or 10.50, I mean. Okay, so just to show you that briefly, okay, if I were going to draw the L, I'm going to draw this in a more rigid format so that you can see it better. So which one am I drawing here? And I think it was up, down. This is my memory of my sugar. Down, and then this was up, OK? So which one did I draw here? I drew the beta anomer of the sugar I was drawing. What if I wanted to draw the enantiomer of this? One way to do this would be to just draw the D sugar very, very carefully, and then just draw the mirror image, OK? If I do this, and I mean really draw the mirror image, so I'm pretending there's a mirror right here. I, this is not a chair. I'm just drawing it in a more generic form here. Okay, so this is a D. This is beta D sugar, and this is beta L. Why? Because I drew the complete mirror image. The enantiomer is the complete mirror image, whether it's in the straight chain or in this form. I could also draw the mirror image of the alpha if I wanted to. The alpha is in equilibrium with it all the time. So this is in equilibrium with, with the alpha L, and this is in equilibrium with the, the beta, D, the alpha D. Okay, so think about that and try one on your own. Just pick a sugar off the table and try it on your own. Okay, I'll see you in class.